The show was not renewed for a second season. What do you think would have happened if that was renewed? I probably would have died. I mean, that's the God honest truth. I, I don't think had I not gotten sober in that moment and really taken a step back that I would be sober today. Let's turn now to the bling ring, that gang of youths charged with breaking into the homes of Hollywood's rich and famous, making off of some of the most prized possessions. Hello. LAPD. What? We have a warrant to search your house. According to police, the kids in the bling ring would wait till the celebrities were out of town and then use maps on the internet to case the homes before they showed up to steal. How was it inside? <laughs> you okay? It's not good. <laughs> This is terrible. <laughs> this is why I like this way. The defense would like to make a motion to dismiss. The motion to dismiss is denied. Nancy Joe, this is Alexis Nyers calling. It's been almost 10 years since Pretty Wild premiered, and Alexis Haynes, formerly Alexis Nyers, lives a very different life now. And she's in the studio to talk about it, and I'm very excited to have you. Thanks for having me. You wrote a book, Recovering from Reality, My Journey Back to Wholeness. Yes. I just kind of felt like it was time. Um, it had been nine years later since I got sober. I got sober when I was 19 years old and really put behind the um, old lifestyle that I had and had built this new, big, beautiful life around me and it felt like this is the time. You do not hold back at all. No. What I found in my kind of later stages of my healing is that I needed to reclaim my story. And my story is one that's filled with a lot of heartache and almost every form of trauma possible. And so I just said, you know what, screw it. I'm not gonna hold back and I'm gonna tell my truth from my early childhood sexual abuse, my parents' divorce, my drug issues and when they began, the physical violence that was taking place, the sexual assault that I, that I incurred later on in my life. And then of course, Pretty Wild and the Bling Ring and my life now and how you go from all of that trauma and all of that public humiliation and embarrassment into recovery. I'm just here to show you that like, if I can do it, anybody can do it. If I can publicly burn my life down and have everybody ridicule me for it mm -hmm. and have a very, um, you know, public addiction and go to jail multiple times, and heal, then you can too. Let's talk about the the addiction because that kind of came out, at least for me as a fan of Pretty Wild, that came Later. out down the line. Like yeah. that wasn't something that we knew about. So we're, you were on drugs during the show. I was, yeah. I, I had been on drugs pretty much consistently from around um, my middle school years until I got sober when I was 19. It began with just you know, teenage stuff, smoking pot, drinking warm beers out of my friends' fridges mm -hmm. in the garage and, and going to parties. But by the time I was 15, I became addicted to Oxycontin. And from there, my addiction progressed really quickly. The funds that I was getting from the show allowed me to basically, for my addiction to explode. And so by the time that I was 17, I was using heroin every single day, all day long, and that didn't stop until I got sober after my second arrest when I was 19. Have you rewatched the show at all? I've watched bits and pieces, so the, I laugh, like the meme of all memes of me melting down to Nancy Joe is sent to me almost on a daily basis on Instagram. <laughs> <laughs> And now I actually find it really funny and I can laugh at those parts of myself because it is kind of comical, right? I mean, it's sad and there was heartbreak and mm -hmm. there's definitely stages of healing and now I'm at the point where I can laugh at myself and say, okay, this is completely absurd. Yeah. Um, so I've watched back bits and pieces. There are still episodes that I've never seen. Is there anything that you know about or have seen on the show where you're like, oh, I was fully... I mean, I was loaded like from the second we started filming until the second we stopped. I mean, when you have a an addiction to opiates, you literally can't stop because you start going through really painful, excruciating painful um, withdrawal symptoms. And so, yeah, I, I used in between every single um, different you know, location that we filmed at, I would sneak into the bathroom and and use and yeah, wow. escape as much as I could. At what point did you realize I need to get help? The first time I went to jail. So I ended up accepting a plea deal and I spent a summer in jail on a six month sentence. Mm -hmm. And this is the bling ring one. Yep. And so 
I could clearly see that opiates were a big problem for me. I went through withdrawal in jail, which is brutal. And I knew, okay, there's a problem here. Clearly I cannot consume these substances like this. I'm destroying my life. How did I get here? All of those things transpired in jail. And then when I got out, I had every intention of staying clean, but we know that the reality of that when you don't have proper support is slim to none. Within two weeks, it was back off to the races and my addiction actually got worse. Even though I had less money and less access, I began shooting up intravenously, which is something that I wasn't doing on a regular basis before. And I was panhandling for money and I had nothing left. All of these things ended up becoming one of the biggest blessings in my life though, because I would not be sitting here today had all of that not transpired. I was gonna say, do you look back at Pretty Wild <coughs> as being a blessing or a curse? A blessing, Yeah, a blessing. This industry is known for having people in it that have a lot of substance abuse issues and so um that trauma and that pressure is like amplified when you're on tv right mm -hmm. and and so it drove me to a bottom fast and so while um nobody else is responsible for all of that except for me it amplified that and i'm just grateful that I was given a second chance because that's an, what ended up happening. Judge Peter Espinoza saved my life. I ended up being arrested for possession of heroin and he saved me. He sentenced me to treatment instead of three to six years in prison. How long have you been sober now? Coming up in December, it'll be nine years off of heroin and I did relapse on whippets in treatment. So I don't count my sober date until March um, so, but yeah, n almost nine years. Congratulations. Thank you. That, that's amazing. What would you say the biggest misconception is about sobriety? So many people think their lives are over when they get sober, that everything's going to be boring, that they're not going to have friends, that they're not going to be the same person that they were, that vivacious, funny, or whatever their alter ego was when they were using, that mm -hmm. that's gonna go away. And I'm just here to say that you can have a big, beautiful, fulfilled life. It's not easier by any means. It's actually, I would argue, harder in a lot of ways, but it is so worth it. I'm just as funny and silly <laughs> and have just as much energy as I did before. I'm a little bit more tired because I'm a mom. In your book, you describe yourself as a suburban housewife, two little girls, a dog, a cat, and a husband. Mm -hmm. Did you ever expect to get to this place? No, no, um, I didn't. Um, especially with my dating history, it was like, I was always into the bad boys who broke your heart and you know, and I was a mess myself and thought I was so unlovable. And then here comes this amazing man who was Canadian, didn't really know about my past, but when he found out about it, he loved it. He was like, are you kidding? Like, that's the ultimate redemption story. I love that about you. And so finding someone that I felt like I could be authentically myself with was huge. And I'm so lucky he's just the best partner. I mean, okay, I'm like oozing about him, but that's he's great. great. He's amazing. I mean, two kids later, yeah. question about the husband. That's two a kids, great thing. We've been married for seven years and we are madly in love with each other. How yeah. did you guys meet? We met in AA. I don't advise it. <laughs> Worked for us, but like not for everybody. Yeah. There was none of that you complete me stuff. We knew that we needed to be two complete individuals entering into this coupleship together when we got together. And mm -hmm. I think that that's something that we work um, really hard to support each other on. So making sure he knows what he needs to do for his self care and I know what I need for mine. Right. And then of course, parenting together and having that family time and all of that. So yeah, it's definitely a juggling act. Yeah, so how old are your girls? My youngest is three, my oldest is six. Okay. What happens, like I say, a decade from now when they discover yeah. Pretty Wild? Yeah. Like, have you thought about how you address this? <laughs> I have, you know, we own a drug and alcohol treatment center, Aloe House, and my kids have seen addiction and the way that it affects people. I mean, they're growing up in a community of people who are in recovery. They know what addiction is. Mm -hmm. um, they know that mommy and daddy don't consume substances. And honestly, I don't think it'll be like a huge deal. We're yeah. really open parents. Um, you know, I, I don't, 
foresee it being a huge issue. Yeah. And if it is, I'll stick them in therapy. Let's talk about yeah. the podcast. You did something that I think a lot of Pretty Wild fans were elated to see was the <laughs> relationship, the reunion with the family, which we had not seen you guys on camera together since the show, really. Yeah. Can we talk about your relationships with them, where they stand today? Because Tess, you guys were thick as thieves in the show, like would not spend a minute apart. And then a couple years down the road, I think in an interview you said you guys were not talking anymore. Where do you guys stand today? That's probably the most challenging relationship out of all of them. Um, one that I had to look at my part in, which was a, from a codependent standpoint and the way that um, I put so much of me into this relationship and just wasn't getting the same amount out. And I'm not, you know, you have to look at your side of the road and then somebody else's and you also have to accept and meet people where they're at. And it is a challenge. Like I feel emotion, like I can feel like emotional yeah. in my body. I love her very much. Um, but sometimes you have to take a step back and just say like, this is not serving me anymore. So you guys don't talk as we, often or? We don't talk as often, yeah. yeah. And I went to go visit her. I tried to see her um, in Wisconsin. She lives in Wisconsin now and she has a beautiful family. I'm so happy for her. Like the fact that she made it out too. Yeah, because her abuse, you guys were yeah, in using tandem. together. Yeah, so I mean, that's a miracle. And I'm so, so happy for her and I can't express that enough. It's just sometimes you have to realize that these relationships dumping all my time is not serving either of us mm -hmm. anymore. Is so. she still like a like your sister? Do you still consider that or? Yeah, I'll always consider her family yeah. and I'll always love her very okay. much. Gabby, younger sister Gabby. Yeah, my relationship with Gabby um, also has highs and lows. I think that it is definitely better. Um, we have gone to therapy. We have just really, um, we had two different childhoods under the same roof, mm -hmm. um, which is common in chaotic families. Everyone plays their role, right? Yeah. And so she was like the perfectionist, never gonna get in trouble, you know? And, and I very much so was the wild child who was gonna rebel and, you know, scream from the rooftops that this is crazy. And so, yeah, we are doing great. She got married a little over a year ago. I adore oh, wow. her husband. I'm so happy for them. Yeah, I mean, it's crazy that little Gabby's 25 I know. now. I was gonna say, 25. how old is she now, 25? <laughs> My gosh. Yeah, yeah it's wild. <laughs> That's amazing. Your mom, mm -hmm. how is she doing? She is doing well. About two years into my recovery, she finally realized that she had made a lot of mistakes as a parent and she jumped into therapy and coaching and now she actually helps other families not go down the same path we did mm -hmm. and she developed a program called Families United for Recovery. She has groups in Westlake, uh, in Malibu every Wednesday night and is doing great things. I'm really proud of her. I have to imagine she got pretty scrutinized from that show because it like mm -hmm. kicks off and they're like, girls, come down, take your Adderall. Yeah. And then everything kind of happened after that. I have to imagine she got a lot of heat from that show. She definitely did. I mean, I think we all did some more than others. Yeah. Um, you know, that was back in the day with like The Soup and all of those shows where all they did was look at reality stars. It was just a, we made for perfect reality TV. Yeah. Well, because it came at, a, I mean, it wasn't, what the show was supposed to be originally, right? Wasn't it like a different concept? Yeah. So the show took a 180 when I was arrested. So it was supposed to be just kind of like the hippie crunchy version of the Kardashians. And then all of a sudden it made a 180 when I was arrested on the second day of filming. Wow. Wasn't it supposed to be called something else? Too? It was supposed to be called, yeah, Homeschooled with Arlington. So it's just funny because both Tess and I were out of school at that point, but whatever, it worked <laughs> for TV. <laughs> It's, it's interesting watching these shows back, kind of knowing how the reality world works a little mm. more. Like there's times, like I, I just did a rewatch of the show and there was times where I was like, I don't think she's crying because she's sad at the situation. I think she's crying, she's pissed at production. Yeah. I mean, is there anything looking back at that show you stick that sticks out to you as like a storyline that was? Everyone thought that I was like crying over Javier, but really I was crying because TMZ posted that I was in Mexico and I guess I wasn't supposed to be, but I didn't know that. And I went there with production thinking that everything was gonna be fine. And here I am finally like living a little, like taking a little bit of a breather after 
being hounded every single day here in LA. And then it was like two days later, oh, you gotta go back. And then the Nancy Joe call, that wasn't the initial reaction. I recorded that voicemail so many times and the final moment where I blew up, like that was after many takes of doing that, that recording. This was back in the day where if it didn't read your voicemail or register your voicemail, it would say, we're sorry, but you know, please re-record after you're finished, press one. And so I just kept re-recording and re-recording and that's the famous line to my mom of every time you yell, I have to re-record it. Because because she would yell in the background and then it wouldn't pick up the audio on the voicemail and I would have to do it over and over again. Nancy Joe, this is Alexis Nyers calling. $29! Every time you yell, I have to re-record it! So was that more you wanting to re-record the voicemail because you didn't like it or was it production just, being like, we need it again? No, 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 it was, it was literally, I was like, I'm just trying to get through this scene and can you like, shut up and so I can finish. Yeah. Like, I just want to be done. I just was humiliated. I mean, people didn't get to see the behind the scenes. They saw little clips of me meeting with Nancy Joe, and of course the clips that the producers liked, which is me talking about how I wanted to be like Angelina Jolie or mm -hmm. whatever it was. I like handbags, um, yeah, it was like yeah, all, it yeah. Was, it was all like the bad parts, but I had sat with Nancy for hours and hours talking to her. She was someone that I really trusted and um, she promised me, you know, we made a conscious choice that we weren't gonna do any media except for her. So this was kind of gonna be like my one shot at, not that I had many redeeming qualities back then, cause I didn't, um, but I was just a child. I was 19. 18, yeah. I was 18, 18 yeah, yeah, just turned 18 when we started filming the show. So, um, you know, I really, I trusted her. And so here comes the article and I'm so excited to read it. She had said she wasn't gonna talk to any other members of the bling ring, all of the stuff. And then I read it and then I was like, oh my God, not only is this not what I expected, but she's fabricating what I'm wearing into court and all of that. And and so it was pretty devastating. Have you ever talked to her? Yeah, I then? recently. Beyond the voicemail? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I recently reached out and I was like, Nancy, like, come on the podcast. Let's hash it out. Let's That'd talk about the way that women are portrayed in media. Wow. I mean, she has not changed in 10 years. And that's all I'm going to say about that. Some things she was just straight up making up, like things that she thinks are facts are not facts. And it's mm -hmm. court record and very public. And I was kind of taken by surprise. You honestly. were in fact wearing... BB, BB shoes. shoes. Yeah, well, that made her. Little brown BB she, that's shoes. That's when I got, she blocked me on Twitter because E went and pulled the footage and proved that I was wearing the shoes. And then she, yeah, that was not, that wasn't pleasant. Oh, wow. So uh, the show was not renewed for a second season. I mean, at that point, Tessa's addiction was through the roof. I was in rehab. Yeah. There wasn't much to renew. What do you think would have happened if that was renewed? I probably would have died. Yeah. I mean, that's the God honest truth. I, I don't think had I not gotten sober in that moment and really taken a step back that I would be sober today. Was there a point during all of that where you were like, I, I'm gonna die if I don't? Yeah, those last couple of months, many times. And, um, you know, Tess had an overdose that I was present for and resuscitated her and- Oh my gosh. Yeah. How old were you when that happened? Um, yeah, I was 18. You actively walked away from the limelight. Was that a difficult decision? Were you ever like tempted to come back over the last nine years? Yes. When I got sober, I was about to file for bankruptcy. Like my whole life was in shatters. And um, I, I can totally understand like the, you know, it's quick and easy money. It's, it's yeah. like, I'll just go on any reality show and make 50 grand and then, you know, survive for a little bit longer. And so that was very tempting. And I'm very grateful that for whatever reason, my brain just kept saying, stop, <laughs> that's yeah. not worth it. Would you ever do a reality show now or like maybe in the future because you're in a totally different place? Yeah, I, I considered it. I mean, it would definitely depend on the show. Yeah, I mean, yeah. has it have like offers come your yes. way that you've- A number of offers have come my way. And so far, um, it just doesn't feel right. Congratulations Thank on everything. You. I mean, it's like really awesome to talk to you Thank and you. I just can't wait for people to know more about your story Thanks. and yeah.